<clears throat> Welcome to your best bets, episode 186. Um, pretty exciting to close in on number 200. And um, with me tonight is, um, I don't know if like founder, owner, I don't know what the right term is for Section 5 Golf Academy in Fort Wayne, Callahan, LZ. Callahan was with us a couple of years ago. I feel like we've been trying to make this happen for a little while, so glad you'd uh, be able to make it back on and, and talk some golf. Yeah, man, it's good to be here. Thanks for having me. Um, and I just want to put it out there for the listeners. We just put out a two-hour podcast from the other night uh, previewing the NFL season, so go take a listen to that before games start next Thursday. Callahan, who's your team in the NFL? Who are you rooting for? Colts. Colts, Colts guy. Okay. okay. How, how yeah. you feel about how you feel about the season? To be honest with you, I am not a huge football guy, so I'm not all that yeah. well researched. Um, so I guess that doesn't. I don't really have much much That's to fair. say about that. Fair Spend enough. Spend my fair time enough. in basketball. Yeah, fair enough. Uh, IU Hoosiers, though. IU basketball is gonna be pretty good. That's all I'm gonna all right. say. All right, I'm with you. I'm with you on that. Um, all right, so we're th three, almost three and a half years into Section Five. Is that correct? Yeah. Yeah, so, it would be three and a half. Yep. Yeah. So tell us where you're at with um, golf instruction and, and yeah. your venture with Section 5 three and a half years in. Yeah, man, it's been really good. Um, I think three and a half years ago, I would have said if I could go back then, I would be happy with where I'm at. Um, <clears throat> I've got some really good guys, some really good girls. Uh, I've got a team of maybe 15, 25, 15 to 25 competitive players, which has been really awesome. Um, and it's going really well. I would say that my golf game as of late has, it's been a difficult situation. I'm not quite sure where my game fits in. Uh, I spend so much time thinking about other people's golf swings, other people's games. It's been a bit of a challenge. Um, yeah, so that's been kind of a, a, a difficult thing for me to figure out this summer. Got a lot of things going on. Just got married, uh, having a baby in February. So a lot of things are happening. Golf, my golf game is still pretty good. Um, tournaments are a little interesting, but yeah, I mean, things are great. Academy's awesome. I love it to death. So it's been really good. I, I think you being a, a local guy, Fort Wayne guy, and then you know, coming back to school play, to play for Purdue Fort Wayne. There's you've got sure. a you've got a you've got a following here, at least in the in the, the local golf community. So you've got a lot yeah. of people behind you. Um can, can you kind of describe what that that journey is like for your golf game, kind of the 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 instruction part aside and and trying to figure out what what the best path forward is? Yeah. Um it's funny because I mean I'm on a lesson T eight nine hours a day and uh, I don't ever mention my game. I don't ever talk about myself. My, I think my kids, I think they know I'm a pretty decent player, but it's funny. Like I'll, I'll grab a seven iron and I'll demonstrate or something and I'll hit one. And they're like, they're looking up at it like, Oh, that was actually pretty good. So, um, in, in the lesson T like throughout my day, golf, my, my golf games kind of like on the back burner, um, Forging ahead, I would like to continue to stay competitive. I mean, I played like a full season last year in the uh, PG, Indiana PGA, played nine events in the winter uh, winter series in Florida, played pretty well. And when I tee it up, it's it's usually pretty good. Um, I just don't have like the second gear. I don't have like the extra shots. I don't have the stuff that I really need if I wanted to try to do something, if I, if I wanted to play against the best in the world or – try to play in some major stuff like that. I mean, I think I could do it in the long term. The long term goal is to like maintain, have an awesome academy and uh, play in a couple majors. So I can kind of backdoor my way into the, some PGAs. If I go through the PGA, try to qualify for the US Open. Um, but as of now, it's it's been a difficult thing trying to find a balance. Um, yeah, I think it's, it's, it's hard to find time to do to kind of live your life, do your instruction, sure. right? Have a personal life and then the golf part. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. It, it, it's a good challenge and it's a challenge I enjoy. Um, I think I'll just need more time to figure out kind of how to, how to do it all. Um, but it's like, it's nice. Cause I, I go to a tournament, I don't play good. I come back to the lesson to the next day. 
doesn't really affect the way that I teach. Um, no one really asks. We actually very spend almost no time talking about my golf game, which is nice, honestly. Yeah. Um, but I'm in it like this summer, early in this early in the year, I think April or something, I took four of my 13 year olds, 13, 14 year olds out and played River Bend, shot 65, and they were blown away. It was like this coach is actually a pretty good player if he uh if he plays. Um so yeah, I, I like it to let him know that I can still beat him. Um, but yeah, we'll see. <laughs> so you know, the competition that you're playing against when you're playing competitive events, what you know, where do you feel like there's um you know the the, the gap that you're trying to yeah uh, improve or what a specific part of your game where you're like oh i've seen these guys i've got to get better at this yeah that's a good question i think it's um i'll never forget this for the rest of my life i spent all winter working on my golf swing kind of changing some things for a long time i've gotten really far behind the golf ball like in the backswing and i'm really good at hitting a driver really good at hitting a driver so i'm a little so i've got to kind of hit up and out on a driver to get it to go anywhere um so this whole winter, I spent a lot of time like working on staying more centered, staying more on top of it with an iron and um, felt really good. I get to Evansville Country Club, Southern Open, first hole, I push cut one off the tee behind a tree and I've got to hit it. It's like 170 at OB left. I've got to hit it under one over the next off uh, the balls above my feet and I've got to cut it. And I'll never forget this. I'm over the ball and I've, I'm getting ready to hit the shot. And I thought to myself, um, I don't remember the last time I've seen this. And like, obviously with the winter time, uh, I couldn't have done it anyway. I mean, I played in Florida and for a while, but that's the part where I'm at, which is like, I don't get to play a whole lot. I play maybe once a week at a max. So it's just like seeing shots, taking some off, hitting into a left pin, hitting into a left, right wind to a left pin. Those are the stuff like, that's the stuff that I just don't play enough to be able to do very well. Yeah. Um, and that's just the difference. I mean, you can kind of, and the hard part is like it, it's one one round or it's it's eighteen holes. So if you get hot, you can do something. But I mean, you got to be pretty in charge to win because you got to shoot five, six, seven under to get it to get it. I mean, to, to win. So and I mean, there's several examples like bogeying a par five early in the round. You got seventeen more holes, and like that kind of just costs you the tournament unless you do something crazy. Um, just the sharpness, the stuff that's is is kind of missing i mean and the competition is just a, it's a joke right how good yeah, these guys yeah, are pretty good i mean i played in the winter series in florida i had i think i played nine i said nine i think i played in seven I, had, I think i was in the top five five times of seven but i played against like omar uresti has won 20 million dollars in the year on the uh, pga tour played with every single guy i played with in the final round because there's two rounds every single guy i played in the final round had played in at least two or three majors I mean, these guys are like, they say they're on, they're PGA pros, but they're pretty damn good. And there's like several of the guys I played against, they qualified for this year's PGA. They made the cut. They like had a chance. There's just Michael Blocks in the field. It's like, I mean, these are pretty good players that we're talking yes. about. Yes, for sure. So, so, so it sounds like you were able to compartmentalize pretty well when you're, you're playing competitively and then, and then. You know, like you said, the next day you got you got a lesson, you got a couple. And how are you able to kind of just get back into the right frame of mind just to focus on the, your student or whoever and then kind of put your own game aside? Luckily, a lot of the tournaments I play, it's a three, four, five-hour drive home. So I can kind of take that and uh, – Decompress. Yeah, decompress. Um, and then when I get to wake up the next day, I'm ready to go back to work. Um I mean, I think if, and I do have some kids that will follow, a lot of kids that will follow and watch. And when they ask me questions, I'll, I'll think about the round and everything else. But, you know, I mean, my golf game, the way that I played yesterday doesn't help them play any better today. So it's kind of just the way it goes. Um, it's not easy always, um, but I've gotten pretty good at it. I want to talk about the instruction part a little bit. When, when did you feel like you had an eye for the golf swing? Um, you know, just, you know, I did a lesson with you, I think a couple of years ago, and sure. it's, it's impressive how quickly you can recognize something that sure. you, that, that is a miss in someone's swing that or you, you want to correct. And when did that start for you? Was that when you were, were a kid and a teenager? When? 
Yeah, I think um, my four best friends, probably for the rest of my life, uh, we used to play all the time, practice all the time, and we would kind of made a habit of going to the range late at night, like six, seven, eight o'clock. We'd close the range down, and I would help them, and I it was so much fun for me to help them and watch them actually play well afterwards. I mean, I'm sure I made them worse a couple of times. I'm like 16 years old. I didn't, really didn't have any idea what I was doing, but um, for the most part, like when I gave them input, it seemed to help. Um, and so I think I kind of filled it then. I also am like a complete huge golf swing nerd. Like I, I, I watch a lot of golf. I re screen record everything I can find. Anytime PGA tour has like a good down the line or a uh, face on video during coverage, like I'll stop it. I'll screen grab it. I'll look at it. Um, and there's so many people, like so many, so many, so many people that have been so willing, kind to share input, like um, Chris Como, Dana Dahlquist, um, Drew Steckel, Andres Kaley, like they're Andres Kaley, sorry. Um, there's so, like everyone has been very, very, very kind. If I reach out, if I have questions, like they'll give me their phone number and they're like, hey, dude, let me know. Sean Foley. Um, so it's it's really been pretty cool, um, but I think I think it just keeps growing. Like I think you kind of see something. I guess, and I also would say that good players have kind of tendencies that they creep into. If you're a good player. I still remember your lesson. Like a lot of people get the face a little open. I, I I just think it's like over time you start seeing something, and then you see another guy that has the same problem, and you just kind of take off that way. Because I mean, there's there's only so many really so many ways to swing a golf club. Like there are a lot of bad ones and there are a couple of good ones. Like there are probably a million bad ways to swing a golf club and like four or five good ways. And I think the more you see, the easier it gets. When you started this in, in middle of 2021 and then compared yeah. to where you are now, how, where's your, I guess, confidence in yourself being able to, where you started, was there nerves and like, man, is this really going to work? Is, is, you know, am I going to get, you know, word of mouth, like, sure. you know, some more students as with, uh, you know, yeah. kind of compare the, the where, you, where you were then to where you are now with it. Yeah, um, definitely there were nerves. Like I left, I was working at Apex, I left there and I didn't know what was going to happen. Um, I knew I could deal with it, whatever it was. And I knew that I think I'm good enough at what I do that over time it would work out. Uh, I didn't really have any safety blanket I just kind of took a risk and it worked out really well um but yeah I mean at this point I feel pretty confident with the way that I teach the way the things that I do my players have played I'd say pretty well um and yeah I, I feel pretty good about where things have gone I mean I still I try to always be a beginner I have a beginner's mindset I always want to learn and I can learn every day it's great I mean I think in the early goings like I was very fortunate to get a couple of people that I got some really good players that trust me really early on the holder boys. Um, and I think I learned more from them than they learned from me um, to have Alex Holder. I mean, that kid's unbelievable. Like he is absolutely unbelievable. And I learned so much from him that I could never repay him for. Like it was unbelievable to watch. So, uh, and I think, so getting that kind of, I had a pretty good group really early and <clears throat> that helped a bunch. And we may have talked about this two years sure. ago when you were on, but using technology um, in your in your methods, and and I, I know that's kind of just the way it, instruction has gone, you know, sure. it, at least with with just TrackMan and simulators, and you know, you had an app on your phone. I remember we were looking at. I mean, how sure. important? I mean, is there is there a balance though of being able to use that, and then also yeah. still using your eye and what your eye tells you? Yeah, so I teach uh, in the summer. I basically teach five, six days a week outside of Chestnut with no TrackMan. Um, and I teach one day a week inside with TrackMan. I would say that for TrackMan is nice for people who are good players and people who understand TrackMan. It ends up with someone who is unfamiliar. It ends up turning into me explaining numbers for a long time. Right. Um, and... I think it's counterproductive in some ways for someone who is beginning the game of golf or like even a 25 handicap, like when the 25 handicap goes and tees it up on a Saturday morning, like what does attacking go really mean? 
Like, I mean, we can sit there and talk about it all day long, but like, yeah. I, yeah, I mean, I, I just don't think it's, I think it's a very important if you're looking at um, really good players and trying to like see what, if I move this piece, if I make the golf swing go over here, what does it do and why? Uh, like I think like, and so Nick Holder would be a good example. Uh, he gets the, he's like, has the strongest grip in the planet earth and it drives me nuts, but we're trying to fix it. Um, and occasionally he'll hit this like pull hook and in his mind, it's like, Oh, the club's trapped behind me. And that's why I pull hooked it. I was too far from the inside. The face was shut. Pull hook. Mm -hmm. What we found at Trackman is like, I can show him a Trackman. It's like, Hey, that's not like you're actually swinging quite a bit across the ball, which is fine. The face is just way too close. So like verifying things with players, people who have preconceived notes, it's like, oh, I'm coming over the top of it. It's like, actually, no, you're not. You're doing the complete opposite of that. Um, is, is, is a good track yeah. use. So the um, how you use social media, I, I really enjoy. You'll you'll usually post a couple reels a week. Just, yeah, I try. Um, do you find that that's been useful as as sort sort of marketing what you do? Yeah, and, and yeah, I think so. It's uh, I mean, people like looking at good golf swings and it's the hard part is like, I'll get kids all day. Like, you're going to post that on Instagram because that's a good one. I'm like, yeah, I'll, I'll post that one. Yeah. Um, I mean, I don't want it to be about like everyone's got to swing it perfectly to be on my Instagram or whatever. Like, I think that's, uh, yeah, I think it's good. I mean, people enjoy it. It's fun. I enjoy it too. Um, there are certainly some good golf swings on there and every single golf swing I've taken a video of and put on Instagram probably still has some work to do. Uh, so it's not quite perfect yet, but yeah, it's fun. We, we enjoy it. It's a good time. I really, my, my wife is a uh, wedding photographer and her feed is like the most beautiful thing in the world. And mine is not. So she gives me crap that it's not so good looking, but um, yeah, it's fun. Maybe, maybe she can help you with some she of can help me. Yeah. She can help me. She used to yeah. do. Yeah. Sure. I'm going to need her professional opinion. Um. It, what's more stressful now is is it the instruction piece or or sort of the business financial instruction, piece? instruction piece i'm pretty good at the business part it's i went okay. to school for it. um really a non nothing it's honestly a nothing burger it's just yeah. tracking my lessons and yes it's not too difficult um the instruction piece keeps me up at night sometimes like i there are players that haven't played well or aren't playing well and it drives me nuts i, I dream about it all the time i'll never like it just, I always dream about someone's golf swing almost every night. So I'm crazy. I'm telling you, I'm crazy. But that's, yeah, I mean, that's, a, that's a, for the golfers that come to you though, that I think that gives everyone a peace of mind that you, you care. I mean, if you're, yeah, for sure. you're, you're worried about them in your own time, your free yeah. time. And I mean, that sure. especially the players that you feel like are, you know, have potential and you're, you're stressed out about their swings. That's, that's, I think that's what players want those. They want their instructor, their coach to care. Yeah. And I think, I hope, I hope that no one thinks that I don't care. I mean, it's, it's all I do. It's pretty much all I think about. Um, I mean, my, my goal is like, Hey, if I, if I don't know the answer, I'm going to find it. If it's not getting better, it will like, we're going to, we're going to figure this out. Like you are a good player. You can be an awesome player. We just need to, and I, I think some of it is just like, it takes time. And I, I don't know that people are all that sometimes all that patient. Like you just don't get it overnight. Um, it's one of those sports. Like I, I think if someone teaches you how to dribble a basketball, you probably figure it out with a little bit of practice and kind of put it in play and golf's a little different. I don't know why, but it is uh, there's so many different things you have to do. So many different elements. Like, okay, so now can you do that exact same thing? You got it. You got it. Perfect. Can you do that exact same thing when the ball's sitting below your feet and the pins on the right side of the green, there's water left. It's like, it's just difficult. Um, Cause you can sit there and make it look pretty perfect on a range for an hour. But the second you get out there, it can change. And I've seen that happen a lot, which is like, it is so good right now. Why, did, how did you just shoot 80 yesterday? It's as good as it can be. And then it's like, well, I had the ball below my feet on one and the flag was to the right and I hit it off the heel. And it's like, okay, well there's a double. So it doesn't always, it's kind of a fool's 
game to sit there on a range all the time and think that like you can just stripe it all day and you just deserve to shoot 71. And, and, you know, things are just different on the golf course than sure. they are at the range. And, you sure. know, it, it's, it's like that with other sports as well. I, I have my oldest son, he's in seventh grade and he's, um, he's going to Maple Creek. So that's in the Carroll nice. district and it's, it's uber, uber competitive. And he's, yeah. he's got a skill for basketball, but this, the last couple of weeks I said, let's, let's go start. I said, I I've coached basketball. Basketball's something I know. I said, I'm going to, we're going to talk about game situations, how you handle that sure. versus when you're just out there with your buddies or you're just shooting on your own. I said, yeah. it's, it's, it's a whole different animal, but it's the same, same idea with golf and taking, taking shots that you hit on the range that, you know, I'm trying to hit this low cut, but actually doing it on the golf course when, and we'll talk about in a second, there's, there's real pressure. There's real stakes. It's, it's a lot yeah. different. It's a lot different. Way different. Way different. There's an incubation. Uh, period. I think yeah. it takes time for sure. Uh, do, you, do you have any of the rope hats back yet? What is that? The, the rope hats, the section five rope hats, are, are they, oh, are they available? Oh, I- I need to get some. I actually wrote it down the other day. I need to do some more okay. merch. It's fun. It's always I, awesome. Yeah, I want, awesome. one. I want cool. one. Cool. All right, let's do it. Um. So we 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 talked just for a, like one second before we went live about just how to play when there are stakes, how to play with pressure, and how that creeps into just how you think and feel on the golf course. And um, you know, just coming from the city tournament and playing in that and then talking to guys and that and just how your body and how things change and how you feel and your basically your whole body it just feels different when you're yeah. you have to you have to hit a shot that matters compared to you're just out there you know freewheeling it um what's what is what is your thought on just how to handle that and from, either from your own experience or or is that part of you know, your instruction when you're, when you're working with your players? Yeah, I think that's a very good question. I think, um, is it a part of my teaching? Sure. I tried the best I can because it'd be stupid not to. Um, I've had a lot of experience myself playing. I mean, now I'm 27, which is crazy. I started playing competitive golf when I was, I can say serious competitive golf when I was in fifth grade. So that'd be, I don't even know, 15 years. Right. So I've got quite a bit of experience. Um, back then it was easier because I didn't really, I was just such like a, I didn't see any negative. Like I didn't see, I didn't have any scar tissue build up. I didn't see any bad shots. Like anytime I had a short sided chip to a tight pin on tight grass, like it was just no problem. Like this is going to be good. Um, and I've seen a lot of bad shots since then. So I think it's, diff- it's more difficult now um, than it used to be. But I would say that the number one thing is like, I think that it's important to know that it is actually an advantage when you're playing in tournaments to be anxious to some amount. Like, I think there is a, uh, there's a threshold, like a little bit of anxiety, I think is good. And I think if you looked at like the best surgeons in the world, like if you went to the doctor, I don't think you want the doctor to be like half asleep doing your surgery. Like, I think you want him pretty jacked up, like a little bit anxious, a little bit um yeah just a little bit anxious uh, I, I think a little bit of anxiety is good and i think that it's important to know as well that you can perform really well and do a lot of awesome things when you're anxious and so we talk about i try to talk about that a lot it's like hey our goal here is like of course you're going to be almost shitting your pants like when you're on the last 12 of a tournament you have to win or you have to make a six footer to win but i think that you need to know that you can perform well when you feel this way mm-hmm. our goal is like if you think about a jug, like a jug of water or jug, whatever, just like a huge gallon jug. Um, the goal is like to be able to, for, to perform well as that gallon of jug is filling up. I think people do really poorly when they start to feel these things and they start to freak out about it. Like the goal is to be able to perform well when you're feeling a lot of these motions. It's not easy to do. Um, but that is the goal. And so, like, there's a story of Cam Smith. I think it's the best when he won the British Open. It's like on the 14th hole. Um, he, he like grabs a water bottle from the whatever, from a little cooler thing and tries to take a sip and he can't, he can't swallow it. So nervous he can't swallow. Um, 
but he goes on to shoot whatever what whatever it was 31 30 and when the US or when the British Open. Um but he's so nervous he can't swallow, but he can still play really good golf. And I think it's like even just talking about that to my kids, it's like, hey, you can perform extremely well when you're very nervous. We've trained this, like everything we've done in practice has basically prepared you for this. And if you're willing to embrace the things that you're feeling and say, like, you know what, hey, like I, when I wake up tomorrow, I'm going to be nervous. I'm going to feel like crap. I'm going to freak out. Like, this is just the price of entry. Then I think you can play pretty well. But it's like when you start freaking out about the feelings you're having, like trying to take deep breaths, and then you're freaking out that the anxiety is not going away. I think it gets really hard. Uh, and that's when I see people do poorly, for sure. Um, so, yeah, that's like the goal is to be able to perform well as your jug or your gallon of water, whatever you want to call it, is like almost about to tip over. I think you just need to be able to be to handle more. Um, but we talk about this all the time. I say this probably once a day, maybe twice a day, maybe more. Is like I get kids that will come in and they'll hit balls and they'll hit it, they'll hit it really well. And they're like, you know what? After today, I feel way more confident. And I'll stop them like right in their tracks. And I'm like, hey, you don't need to be confident to play good golf. You need to be competent. Like you don't need to, to have a snake in your, like Steve Irwin or whoever, like he goes out there. I'm sure he's like not all that confident that that snake's not going to do something bad, but like he's very, very, very well equipped to handle the situation and he's competent. And I think that's a big thing is like, I don't need to be confident to perform well. I just need to know what the hell I'm doing. Um, and I think that's kind of the key. Now, outside of that, like um, in terms of when I'm playing or when my kids are playing, I think the pre-shot routine is the most important thing you can do. I think there needs to be a huge emphasis on that. Like, what do I do? What can I even control? Like I can control shooting the yardage. Okay, I know how far it is. And then I can control like what I'm looking at. Okay, it's 175. But that doesn't mean I hit it 175. Like what's around me? What's the wind doing? Like if you start putting a lot of the focus on what do I need to do to give myself the best chance to not make a stupid thing happen? I think it gets a little bit easier. And that to me. So I, I mean, listen to Scotty Scheffler talk all the time, talks yeah. about just committing to his process and then he can live with the outcome. I've, I've heard, I've heard Max Homa talk about this this year, yeah. J- Justin Thomas kind of recommitting to their process, whatever that is. And I'm sure that includes pre-shot routine, as you mentioned, but yeah, going through going through the process, committing to it, and then it, you can live with the outcome if you, yeah. you know, fully committed to that process. 100%. I think that is extremely important. And the, what does the process look like is really the kind of the question. Right. Because I think, I think you'd be surprised, like, if you went back and watched all the people who, I think I had 19 guys in the city tournament, I think most 16 of them made the cut. I went out and watched the last day. And it's like the shots that I saw that went very, very poorly. It was like the planning stage was just not even there. It was just like, oh, range finder. Okay. Club on the ball, smack it. Oh shit. That's in the woods. And I think you'd be surprised. Like if you just took a little bit more time to figure out like, what does a good shot look like? What do I need to do to make it happen? Where do I need to aim? If you go through all those things and you're really, 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 really focused on what it is you're doing right now, you, you'd watch the anxiety and emotions and fear kind of go away. You would actually just see like, because I mean, truly, if you're paying attention to what you're doing right now in this moment, exactly what's happening, you're involved in the process, you're involved in the feelings, you're involved in all of it. You don't really have time to be thinking about like what could be happening, like what might happen, where it might go, what you did in the last hole. And that's where all the anxiety comes from is like, I want to know what's the outcome. I want to know what's getting ready to happen. Like, I want to make sure my ball doesn't go in the woods. Those, that's the, all the anxious stuff. And then like, if you really do a good job planning, putting your energy in the, in the present and now in the focus, it's kind of difficult to be thinking about bad, bad outcomes. Yeah. And it's way harder said, it's way easier said than done. Way easier. Yeah, it is. Because I mean, as you know, you're out there and it, it's, thousand thoughts can go through your mind if you hit a bad shot two bad shots and for sure if it all feels like whatever you've built so far in that round it's it's crumbling potentially with with a couple bad shots so it it is it is a challenge and no matter what level you're playing at i mean i mean you know for for example i mean rory mcelroy at the u.s open this year with 
you know, the couple of the short putts at the end. I mean, how can you explain that other than, I mean, I know, I know the last putt was a really difficult downhill slider, yeah. but, but the one on 16 where it's a two footer straight in, I mean, yeah. that just doesn't happen, then, you know? So I think if you can look at that, yeah, you're right. It doesn't happen. Yeah, I think and that's a good one to actually talk about. Cause I think uh, the real mistake was hitting it over the green the shot before that. I think that's where the whole thing broke down. It's like, if, I don't know. I wasn't there. And I'm a huge Rory fan. Like one of my nicest people I've ever talked to in my life. Great guy. Seems like anyway, from the few minutes I chatted with him, um, I'm the biggest fan. I wonder if like, was the process good? He just, something just didn't quite calculate correctly. Um, but yeah, I mean, that's a hard one. It was tough to watch. Makes me sad. It's tough. It's tough. Um, for someone that's like in my position, kids, job, family, no time to play. What's, I mean, what's the best advice for someone that's still trying to improve, but doesn't really have the time to work on it? Um, yeah. It's this, this a very personal question, Callan. No. Yeah. Uh, how many, how much time do you have? Like an hour a week or less? So before I, before I qualified for city, I had played like two rounds the whole year. So I, sure. I qualified for city and then, then I played city. <laughs> I mean, that was, yeah. that was like yeah. four, four of my six rounds this year. That's how, that's how tough sure. it was. Do you get a practice at all or no? No. I mean, yeah. I'm sure I could forge out time here and there, but you know, it's, you know, kids sports have kind of taken over my life just based on the age that yeah. they are. And um, sure. So, I mean, in, but just in general, though, I mean, is it is it finding one or two things, you know, to to push forward with to, to that you find is like a weak area or is it just reps? You know, what is it? Yeah. With, without time, it's difficult. Um, it's, it's a good question because I'm kind of in the same boat and I've recently begun kind of experimenting with like, how can I continue to get better or at least stay the same? Like, does not get terrible. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. um with the time that i have and i think a lot of it is course management stuff like when i do play like i don't take very aggressive lines i don't do things i know i can't do um but i think a huge piece of it is like i used to see these like i used to hit huge straws when i was a little kid when i was like probably the best in terms of like people i was playing against um at the time, the best I had ever been, and I ever have been, I would say, like, against my peers, I was the best, or one of the best, um, but I hit these, like, huge, nasty, disgusting, every track man person, every track man they would tell you it's so bad, every golf instructor would change it, I hit these disgusting draws, and to the point where, like, I could hit a wedge, and it would land 20 feet right of the hole, and it would spin left, just directly left towards the flag, it was, like, pretty, pretty nasty, but I was really good. And I think I think a lot about that. And I think like if I don't play a whole lot, I know I can hit that shot. Like I know that it's not good. It's not pretty. I'll even apologize. I've done it recently. I'm like, I'll apologize with my playing partners. I'm like, dude, I'm sorry you have to watch this, but like it's all I know I can do right now. And so I'll hit these like big curving draws. And I think for someone who doesn't play a whole lot, like knowing that your ball is getting ready to do something is vital. Like if you're out there and you haven't played much. If you can see something happening, if you can get a curve to start happening and it's kind of repeatable and you know what it's going to do every time, even if you miss it, it's going to keep going left or whatever it is. I think that's very important. Like, I think when you go out to the golf course after not playing at all, if you don't know what's getting ready to happen or you're like trying to like fit shots in, I think it's it pretty hard. Um, yeah. But just like knowing like, hey, this is what I have and this is what I'm going to do my best with. And yeah, I think you can play pretty good that way. I, uh, I, I kind of believe in mental reps as a, as a thing. Is that is that something yeah, no, you're like prescribing? Yeah, hundred percent. I believe that's very important. I also think like we can go, we can go crazy here on the math. I've done it before. Um, might as well let's do it. So, some Pete Cowan is like a world famous golf instructor. His he's got every guy in the world. Like every guy that's ever been any good on from Europe, he has he has taught. Uh, he talks a lot about this, and I think it's pretty amazing. So. What he says is like the golf swing takes half a second to complete. So let's just do the math. Mm -hmm. And let's say you hit a hundred range balls. So that would be, that's 50 seconds. Is that right? Yeah, that's right. Yep. yep. Okay. And let's say you hit half of those good mm -hmm. or you do half, like you hit half of those the way that you were supposed to in terms of like the motion. 
that's 25 seconds. Um, so like in, in a hundred balls, you probably spent an hour doing it. So in a hundred balls or an hour, it, you did made a good rep 25 seconds. If you did say, if you sat there at home and then you like took the time and you got it right and you're in a mirror and you did it for five minutes, that's like a million times more productive. And I talk about that a lot with my students. It's like, Hey, the exact same thing. It's like, you go there and you spend an hour. Well, of that hour, 25 seconds was productive. If you just did it at home for 10 minutes, like that's way ahead. So I think like, yeah, you don't even need to hit a golf ball if you're doing what if you're, do, if you're making like dry swings at home in a mirror or something. I think you can do pretty well that way. It might be a little different when you hit a golf ball, but yeah, I mean, sure. better than certainly better than nothing. I would have to imagine that it's helping you in some way. I, I, I will take the TV remote. And I'll, there you I'll, go. I'll there practice. You go. I'll pr- I will do this like a hundred times. I'll, I'll practice my, my takeaway. Go. My daughter walking like that. What, what are you doing? <laughs> what are you doing? That's uh, I'm sure I'm headed that, that direction. So well. um, that's, that's kind of funny. Um, I, I told you we'd be in and out in about 35, 40 minutes. So we're right about that mark. Uh, so where can people find you um, for section five, if they're interested in the lesson or what? Yeah. Have you? Uh, Facebook, my name, Callahan Elzy, Instagram, Callahan Elzy Golf. They can call me 260-600-2612. Um, I think that about covers it. My website is www.section5.golf. So, awesome. yeah. I, I appreciate, appreciate you coming on. Hopefully that was useful to you. It was. I, 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 no. That's uh yeah. Let's make sure we do this every every couple months, and yeah, I mean, we we can get into a a just a myriad of topics as we go along. So yeah, we can for sure. Appreciate you ha- having you, and um, uh, let me know when you get the hats in because I, I gotta have one. I will, I will. I got you. All right, Good everyone. Man. Thanks for listening. Uh, go check out Callahan if you need help with your golf game. Um, catch you next time. <laughs>